Jillian Michaels is a name we all know. She's a renowned fitness expert and her brand, which we first all saw on the hit TV show, The Biggest Loser, is all about unapologetic tough love. That means that for better or for worse, with Jillian, you know what you're gonna get. This got me thinking, what does it mean to be consistent in your brand? The brand for your small business idea, your personal brand, or even the brand when you show up for work at the office, because whether you like it or not, that's a brand too. Are you consistent or not really? I'm entering this conversation very resistant to the concept of consistency, which is why I want to talk to Jillian. I wanted to get to the bottom of what it takes to be a consistent brand, a consistent entrepreneur. Hell, I'll even start with being a consistent person. This is something I could use your kind of advice on because when I think about branding for myself and the businesses that I run, I'm not sure that I am cut out to be consistent with branding because here's why. Like there have been times where I have regretted being consistent. One thing about me is that I change a lot. I evolve a lot. But that's and your brand. It is. It definitely is. And I have to like disclose this when I get into relationships. I have to be like, listen, let me tell you how I am and that like I'm going to move and change in this. If I look at myself two, three years ago, like my brand now is so much about being bold and confident. But if I look at myself two, three years ago, I was 110 pounds bigger. Like I wasn't really that confident about myself. And so like that was a different girl. If I go back 10 years ago, my brand now is so much about like entrepreneurship and like going out on your own. But I was really like 10 years ago, I was working at Microsoft and like I'm going to climb the corporate ladder. And so I change so much. And there have been times where I have built pieces of my brand around who I was at the time or even built pieces of a company like because some I have a my a personal brand and then I also have companies that I run so built pieces of the company that are shaped around who I am because like you, you part of you is connected to the company in that brand and but there have been times where I've been like, oh, no, we got to redo that because I'm different now. And then I want to self-sabotage it and like blow things up about it because it's built into like an older version of me. And so this is why I, I really look up to the way that you've been consistent with your branding, because it's a worry of mine because I change so much. What do you think okay, about that? I, I think that maybe your brand is evolution. It That's is. That's what you're describing to me. Well, that is on point for your brand is I'm evolving, I'm growing. Yeah. I'm expanding my perspective. So that's your brand. Yeah. Um, and in a way you are consistent with that. <laughs> yeah, I would consistently say. evolving. But that's one thing that I think part of branding is, is knowing if we're talking about personal branding, it's knowing yourself. And by the way, for folks who are listening to this, if you're hearing us talking about personal branding and scenarios and thinking like, I'm, I'm not a brand in that way. You are. Because at this point, we're all brands in a, in a small way. Even when you go to work and you go to the meeting and you sit down in the meeting, people kind of know what to expect from you and how you're going to show up in the meeting. That's your brand at work, for example. And so I, I, I do hear us talking about this kind of underlying thing, which is you kind of have to know yourself well to get clear on the branding. And I don't think 10 years ago I knew, oh, evolving and evolution is part of my brand. I only recently kind of know that. How do you know, have known yourself so well to like be consistent that long? You don't. And, and here's what I mean by yeah. that. You don't need to know you... yourself that well is what you're saying. Ah, okay. Yeah. I have found myself and my messaging in the free fall. It wasn't something mm -hmm. I predetermined or decided upon. It was something that evolved organically. Okay. My philosophy on food my philosophy on fitness, my philosophy on living a better life, my philosophy on A, B, C, D, and E. Right. I found through my own journey of trying to be healthier, happier, live longer, find deeper relationships in my life and, yeah. and grow my career, so on and so forth. It was through, even though my brand isn't like, I'm always changing. No, it's not. It's Jillian's going to make me a sexy promise about my health and she's going to deliver on the information to help me get there. Yeah. I, that's what she's going to do. And she's not going to sell me out for money. That's been a big thing for me. Yeah. And I think that you discover these things as you go about growing on a personal level mm. and they integrate into your personal brand or your businesses. Now that said, if you were to do a one, okay, 
not to be political, and I'm going to try really hard not to. Girl, we can just say, let's have the convo. uh, I mean, let's look at both candidates here for a second. I personally am not a fan of either candidate. I don't judge anybody if they are. I could show you all the ways Trump has kind of 180'd. Oh, dude, we didn't know the abortion. (laughs) No. (laughs) You can get an abortion down the street. Just just go to California. They'll give you an abortion. This is what you all wanted. And you're like, no, you promised that you would do all this crazy shit. And now it's cost the Republican Party and you're walking it back. But Kamala Harris has done a complete 180 as well. I'm a moderate. My point is. Everybody is smelling bullshit, mm. right? You're going, no, you just said, no, you, wait, what? No, you, you said that you were going to do that and now you're doing this. So this is that- actually really helpful to hear though, because I keep hearing you talk about the sexy promise and that you view branding through this Gotta lens. deliver on that promise though. Okay. So let me back up a little bit. Can you explain what a sexy promise is in the first place? Like when you think about it from a branding perspective. Oh my God. Let's see. Rich dad, poor dad. You want to be a rich dad? Uh, think of any, think of any, awaken the giant within. Oh think yeah. Think of any best selling book. And there's yeah. a sexy promise. It's really clear what the sexy promise is. Yeah. That's super interesting. Okay. So I want to invite, well, we'll have a little quick conversation about sexy and that's promise. The, their brand. Think about that. That's yeah. Anthony Robbins brand. I will awaken your inner giant and you will be a giant in your life. Yeah. Okay. Even outside of books, like up. Nike's slogan of like, just do it. That like, we're, you're going to, you're going to get it done. You're going to do the thing. Right. That's a really good example. When you think about your own brand, what would you say is the sexy promise there? It really does come down to living your best life. Mm. The, the, the promise for me is I'm going to help you live your best life. Yeah. I'm going to give you all the information in a way that's easy to digest. And then you can make the choices based off of that knowledge that are right for you to effectuate change. Period. Ooh, okay. All right. I'm going to challenge myself to do this. I'm going to do what I think the sexy promise is for my personal brand and then also my business. I run a company called Apps Without Code. So, okay. My Ooh. personal brand, I think, and even I've learned a little bit of this in this conversation, I think it's like evolve into your most unapologetic self. It's something like Love that. It. I think yeah. for my business, for Apps Without Code, it's something I like- I would almost go a little further. Why would you apologize? What are you apologizing for? Well, I think so many women end up being apologetic about who they are. And I'm not really sure if I should wear this, if I should, for what? Um, Is it shame? Like, I'm not going to be ashamed of my, then I'd be like, live without. Yeah. Okay. It's maybe like imposter syndrome or like, yeah, there's a fear. The fear is a good one. Yeah. But I I determine what you're apologizing for, because if you're not going to apologize, then you're not going to allow something that would make you to apologize to grip your life. Yeah. So it's like l- l- live without blank or live fearlessly or live shamelessly. Yeah. You know, and then that will get you what? So it's like live shamelessly to blank. So I want to invite everybody who's listening or watching this to participate with us. If you come to the comments on YouTube, we can see what you're writing and we can kind of do a little community share. Think about your own brand. It could be a personal brand or your brand that you want to launch. And we want to hear what the sexy promise for your current or future brand can be. Just kind of in one sentence, what people are going to get from access to you. If we want to give my, my example for my company, it's something about like finally have like bring your ideas to life because I help people launch app ideas or the fulfillment of having these ideas actually Bring out in the world. To life. Yeah, yeah. Great so promise. It, it doesn't have to be a personal no. brand. Yeah. So w- when we bring ideas to life, that's a great promise. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Because no one knows, the st- like, they don't know how to do that. So it's like, we're going to help you bring your ideas to life. Oh my God, thank God. I've got all these great ideas. But I'm totally overwhelmed on how to manifest them. Yeah. It's a great promise. And I love the idea of doing this activity of like, what is your sexy promise? Not just if you're an entrepreneur and you have a business or not just if you're a personal brand, but also if you're just none of the above and you maybe have a job and you're like, when I come to work every day, what is my sexy promise in the way I show up at work? Like, what do I want everybody to Absolutely. know that they can get from me and that they're going to be able to accomplish by working for me? That's another way to do it. So if you if you want to participate in that way, you can do it that way in the comments of just like how you show up day to day. 
I'm thinking about brands that have been really consistent at times and that have really changed a lot at times. Like if you think about like Starbucks, Starbucks has had like the same logo with that like mermaid siren lady. They changed it a little bit, but it's like consistent. The color has always been green and white. Like the, the customer experience, because customer experience is part of branding too, is always like inviting. They took this idea of like the, the European coffee shop where you're sitting around and like everybody's hanging out to America where we're all trying to like move quickly and in and out. And like, no, stay here, bring your laptop, hang out, this inviting word. Also this concept of like personalization, you get to like do your custom drink. Those have always been very Starbucks. If I counter sure. that to like brands that change a lot, like Yahoo, for example, has changed a bunch. They did like a bunch of different colors. They started with a purple logo and then like they were doing Yahoo Mail and made it red and they did Yahoo Messenger and made it blue and like all the different colors were different and they also really moved from like what their promise was, right? Their promise started as like we're going to be the best in search and maybe mail to now they're like a content and media company and they've really struggled with this transition because their brand promise of like what they were focused on really changed or what you're going to get completely changed and it's not that dissimilar maybe to like what you're saying about like presidential candidates like we can sniff out when there's a big shift in the promise and if the promise isn't authentic yeah it's i'll give you an example uh, jillian michaels does lunges and sells you workout programs where you do lunges okay yeah now jillian michaels is doing a podcast and she's talking about uh, the White House censoring doctors doing research on protocols to treat COVID, which thank God Mark Zuckerberg just dropped a podcast about that with one of those doctors. Uh -huh. The same week Mark Zuckerberg was like, yep, we were forced to censor these people, these doctors on COVID. But my point is, if you could look at me and say, well, hold on, like, go do your fucking lunges. But this all does fall under my wheelhouse of health and wellness. And yeah. if we're censoring doctors and we're inhibiting the way science is done by presenting hypothesis and then doing a study on that hypothesis to prove your hypothesis and then it's peer reviewed so they can try to disprove your hypothesis, but you're just shutting down science mm. that involves health. Well, that, that is my brand. So you're allowed to grow. Yeah. You're allowed to add on additions, right? But if Jillian Michaels was suddenly selling you a new brand of soda, that's not on brand. Yeah. Does yeah. that make any sense? It does. Health and is I, my brand. There's space to evolve is what I'm hearing you say. And I think allowing yourself to evolve but still have a have that consistency of the core of who you are really kind of requires you to at least maybe do, and you don't have to know it all up front, but maybe do regular check-ins with yourself about what you want the brand to be about. So I think that there's some activities okay. that you can do to get clear on your branding. Like, for example, there's an activity activity of identifying three words to describe your brand. So like when you think about your own brand, I've heard you say like maybe clean as a word. Like what are the th what are three yeah. words to describe your brand that you can say consistent and even if you pivot around on other like what the product is or what the offerings or the line of yeah. business is. Always authentic. Yeah. Okay, and okay. I would use honest, but um, Jessica Alba took it. So <laughs> like, she doesn't authentic. own the word honest. You get to ah, use that in your brand. Like synonymous. Okay. Yeah. The, the woman is now synonymous with the word. Because her company is the honest company, right? Yeah. yeah. God. Okay. Okay. All I mean, right. But think about it. You right? can still like have honest. honest. Yeah. We're being authentic. Yeah. We're, what I'm saying to you, I mean. I'm telling you the truth. Whether it's you like it or not, or whether you like me or not. You know I'm not lying to you. You yeah. even have to agree that my truth is accurate. You know it's mine. You know I am not lying to you. That's my brand. Authentic. Honest. Okay. That's transparent. One. All the same sort of concept. Yeah. Passion. I'm extremely passionate about what I do. Um, Definitely. It allows me to catalyze people towards a change. It allows me to be that change I want to see in the world. It allows me to lead by example. Passion is infectious. I'm very passionate yeah. about my work. Okay, so and honest, I would say, passionate. Oh, did I miss one? And then, well, and then I would either go with empowered, okay. empowering, or clean. But clean sort of falls under that 
authentic and honest, honest. umbrella because that's yeah. part of my promise. So empowered is another big one. And we even named the company empowered media because it's information meant to empower you Yeah, to live your best life. I think if I had to do my own three, okay, so I'm, I'm maybe kind of changing how I think about this because I was previously thinking like I've got personal brand three and then my business has three. I think there's probably more overlap, but let me kind of tell you how I'm thinking about this. So I think personally, okay. maybe bold. Absolutely. Evolving. A hundred, I see it. Self-aware. Evolving and self-aware are too similar. Come give me another. Are they? Okay. Um, yeah, because you're not gonna you're not gonna evolve if you're not self-aware. Facts. Okay. And if you're right. self-aware, you're evolving. <sighs> okay, right. I'm gonna pick evolving. Then that feels more at the core of of the for what activity that we did before. Like, what's the reason of being self-aware? Well, it's so that you can kind of self-actualize evolve. is what I call it and evolve. Yeah. yeah. I think for my company, yeah. Apps Without Code, where we help people build apps, um, I think empowering is one. Um, innovation, like innovative is another word. Like that's something that we, we, that is important to us. And then also this is not one word. I need to condense it to one word, but like for the underdogs, like we help women, we help people of color break into tech and build tech businesses. And that's typically who's attracted to the business. I need like a, a word for that, but that concept every day, everyday people, every day, that's the new one that everyone's throwing around. It's like. They're not ordinary. Yeah. And they're not normal. They're everyday. Yeah, and not like necessarily the startup dude bro that you always see like launching a company that that's not typically the people who are attracted to us. So yeah, that's a everyday is a good one. Okay, so I'm gonna ask folks to to participate in this as well. So we already talked about your brand promise, but I think to help you figure out that promise, it may be useful to anchor in three core words for your brand. It could be a brand that you want to launch out into the world that you've already launched into the world, or it could be your personal brand. So go to the YouTube. If you go to the comments, we can see it again and share three words that you can use to describe your brand and to Jillian's point like you can iterate on this like we're literally iterating back and forth on it could be this it could be that word so just kind of put down your first take of what the three words can be and then we can kind of help each other and iterate there's people right now who are listening to this and they're worried about going to comment about their three words because what if the words change what if they need to tweak them and change them and what I'm hearing you say is that it's the 180 that's the issue and so iterating on it tweaking on it there's a lots of space for that don't don't trip about that the it's okay lack to of evolve authenticity the brand. yeah as long as right. it's authentic so what is a brand that you have enjoyed watching the brand be like like a brand you like that you like that they're consistent gosh can you think of any i gotta t- let me think for a second. you know who i i really think is a branding genius who <laughs> is I'm not saying I'm a fan or not a fan of the brand. Oh, no, I'm you scared. You are a branding genius. It is Chris Kardashian. Oh, come I on. I yes. have never. The woman, I, and she was so clever that she made them, like, and anything goes is their brand. Whatever we want, mm-hmm. whatever we fucking feel like. That's their brand. It's, it's like, like lemons into it. lemonade is the brand. Uh, like, like she has made the 180 their brand because the brand yeah. is money. And you so know what's a like, sexy promise? Lemons into lemonade is a sexy promise. If you're feeling down one day, I can turn lemons you know into lemonade. That and like a bad situation, which is what the Kardashians have done, right? Take, take a bad situation, seemingly oh we've got a sex scandal tape, and turn it into something that works. And fl- oh, why people are making fun of the way that I line my lips, and we turn it into a lip care brand, like a, a makeup brand, like that. Lemons to lemonade <laughs> being the, the 180. That's the brand. That's so inspiring. It is incredible. Like she could literally one day sell Ozempic and the next day start a fast food restaurant because that's the brand. The Kardashian Uh, brand is like whatever the fuck we want. That's the brand. And she's got to be, I'm sorry. I cannot even imagine. I, I do not bow down to the Kardashian altar, but you have got to give it up to Kris Jenner because that Kris Kardashian, Kris Jenner, Cause that yeah. bitch is fucking sm- wow. Yeah, you want to talk about staying in a room? She's made scandal their brand, 
It's just, it's like, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Nothing could go wrong. The worse it gets, the bigger they get. It's, it's just remarkable. It's yeah. Really no, that's is. a really good I, I, example. I, that's a good example. Cause I was going to ask you, what's an example of a brand that you've watched be consistent over the years and another brand that you've watched change, but that hits both, right? Because the, the she 180. Oh yeah. It's part of both. Okay. Bruce is Caitlin. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the brand. Yeah. Awesome. You're like, okay, yeah. So much of your brand is not what you decide it is. It's what other people say about it. Like Seth Godin has this quote that like your brand is not what you say it is. It's what they say it is. Or like Jeff Bezos has said, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And so some of this is like you do your first stab at like, here's what I think the brand is. And then you've got to listen to the opportunities that come by to see what's working and what's not working, how people are responding to you. I think to go back to the the Jenner, Chris Jenner example, right? Like there's a scandal that happens, there's a thing that happens that shifts and changes around it that works. And then you go like, oh, let me yeah. notice. Maybe that's part of the brand. And you kind of have to learn yourself. Or to go back to the example we were talking about with me, right? That I maybe don't know that evolution and changing is part of my brand, but as I start to notice myself and things that are happening, things that and that could be if it's a not a personal brand and what customers are saying or it could be things, compliments that people give you that you have to pay attention to those things because it's also coming, you're planning it and putting it outwards, whatever you wrote in the comments, but you also need to receive and hear what people are saying and how they perceive you so you can kind of pick up on that perception as well. And tweak accordingly. And tweak accordingly. Really, yeah. 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 Take the feedback, see what resonates and, and throw out what doesn't, what doesn't. Okay. This was such a good conversation because what it really, I'm walking away with an understanding that like branding doesn't have to be this perfectly refined thing that everything is already organized. It is a flowing and iterative process. And I'm really excited for folks who are watching and listening this to now go on to their own branding activities to go on canva.com and kind of make their branding site structure structures and and to start writing down the words the the three more words to describe them and their sexy brand promise to start thinking about this but also know that it's an inter- iterative process and that's okay absolutely thank 100%. you 100 percent. thank you so much for chatting with me about this it's really cool to see how your brand has evolved and stayed the same in lots of ways and it's really a good aspiration to look at around consistency with branding oh well thank you for having me i've had a ton of fun mm. i i hope i get to speak to you again soon let's do it